Good morning and welcome. Happy May and graduations and all those fun things that are happening right now. I'm Hope Helfrich and I work here at Wesley Medical Center and I work with Scott Evans to provide this opportunity for high school students and we are so excited to have you. This is going to be one of those presentations that you're going to absolutely love because this is one of the highly sought after observations when we were doing that back in the day. We are in the Department of Imaging Services and we have several people that will be presenting today. Terry is here with me and Jessica as well. We have Travis and Lori and Wynette. They will be interacting with us via the video stuff. And so, welcome. We will have a, a little presentation from everybody. See you soon. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, this is our first go round at this. We're very, very excited to be here with you guys this morning. Uh, my name is Terry Shear. I'm the market director for Wesley Imaging Services. We have four locations. We have the Hillside Campus. We have the Woodlawn Campus, which is a, a, a hospital, just a smaller version um, of the Hillside Campus. Then we have two freestanding EDs. We have one in Derby and one at Wesley at, at the West Side. Um, both of our freestanding EDs offer diagnostic and CT services. Um, then the campuses at Hillside and Woodlawn, we encompass seven different modalities. Um, hang on, sorry, do I need to hold this to talk? Is that what? <laughs> if I put this down, can you guys still hear me? Somebody give me a thumbs up. Okay, All right. thank you. Um, so imaging services encompasses about seven different modalities. Um, you have diagnostic radiology, which is the meat and potatoes of the whole entire gamut. Um, that includes x-rays, it includes some surgical procedures, it includes going to the emergency room, it includes working on traumas, um, it includes fluoroscopy. From there, you can branch out into um, MRI, CT, ultrasound. Ultrasound, actually, you can do it with your x-ray or you can do ultrasound on its own. You can do um, nuclear medicine, which I believe you can do on your own. And actually, MRI, there is a program, but it is a secondary program at Hutchinson after you've completed your radiology. There's mammography. Make sure I got them all there. And interventional radiology. I don't want to forget IR. Travis would shoot me if I did. Interventional radiology is probably one of the um, most intense areas to work. Some of them, they all have some intensity, but in the, the strides they've made for interventional radiology is outstanding. Um, we actually have a neurologist here at Wesley and he can dig a stroke, a clot out of your out of someone's brain. It's, to me, it's just um, quite amazing what they can do. Let's go, oh, sorry, we'll go ahead and get everybody introduced here. Hi, I'm Jessica Rice. I'm the manager of diagnostic x-ray, mammography, and nuclear medicine. I've been at Wesley for about 12 years. I started as a diagnostic x-ray tech, and then I actually trained in interventional radiology for six years, and then I came back to uh, diagnostic as the manager within the last year. Wynette, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Good morning, I'm Wynette Kelly. I'm the associate director out here at Wesley Woodlawn, and I've been with Wesley Healthcare for 31 years now this July. Um, I started out uh, when Wesley had their x-ray program actually was hospital based and I went through their program and worked as a diagnostic tech here. Um, over the years I've dabbled a little bit in CT and MRI and uh, DEXA and um, but has always stayed with Wesley Healthcare. Travis, you want to go ahead? Good morning. I'm Travis January. I'm the nursing manager for uh, interventional radiology. I've uh, been in this role for, oh, about nine months now. Uh, I got my start in the cath lab here at Wesley. I uh, worked there for about eight years. 
uh, moved over to the VA and uh, was the manager of their uh, IR slash cath lab department and then uh, moved on over here. Lori, you want to go ahead? Good morning. My name is Lori Mann and I'm the ultrasound manager. I've been at Wesley for about five months right now. Before that, I uh, went to x-ray school and then I went on to ultrasound school, um, worked as a staff technologist for many years and then became a supervisor and moved up to manager and found my way to Wesley. And I have some of my team here, hopefully they can answer some of your questions. I have a wonderful team, so good morning. Sam, have, Samantha, have you logged on yet? Okay, so I have one more manager. She'll be jumping on later. She's our manager for MRI and for CT. She also manages those areas at West and Derby. Um, Samantha has been with Wesley about 14 years. She trained at Wesley, um, was a staff tech, moved into a lead position, which is like a supervisory position. And then about the same time as Jessica, they transitioned. So about a year and a half, they transitioned into manager roles. Um, so. Oh, we have a list of questions, you guys. And um, the ones that are particular to ultrasound, I'm gonna, I'll read the question and I'll kind of let the ultrasound tech answer it. I'll still give you a better answer. Um, I'm gonna start with the first one. And it, the first one was how fast do you get images back from a CT? The images are actually acquired immediately. It's a matter of seconds. The scanners are so fast now. Um, back when you had like a, a single slice or a four slice, it might take 45 minutes to an hour, but they're just within a matter of minutes. They do multiple sequences. They'll do some before they give contrast. They'll do some after they get, as they're giving contrast. Sometimes they'll do some um, with a delayed about five to 10 minutes. It depends on what part of the body they're looking at. What takes the longest on different studies is the post-processing. So the staff tech, after they do the images, they have to go in and do some post-processing on the computers on those images, and then they send them to the radiologist. So, um, how do you decide whether they need a CT scan or an MRI? Um, CT scan is radiation. MRI is, um, and I'm gonna read specifically what I put down. Oh, sorry, I did not. The ordering doctors determine that. MRI uses magnetics. Uh, it's a it's a big huge magnet like a 1.5 Teslas or what we have here. Um, MRIs look they they look at your tendons your ligaments they can see the things that you can't see on a CT and vice versa. Um, CTs we always look at and CT is more of an immediate re response. Why not? I don't know if you have a better answer to that question. I think you're doing well. It, it's based on what they're looking for, soft tissue, um, things like that is what they look with an MRI, um, but it, it's really particular to how fast they need it looked at. An MRI takes about 45 minutes to an hour uh, per each patient. Um, so if it's an emergent situation, a CT takes three to five minutes to inquire, to acquire the information that they might need uh, in a trauma situation. So a lot of times the CT is ordered first um, and get the basic information for them. And depending on if there's something specialized that they need to see a little bit differently, then they'll follow up with an MRI. Um, so it's all based on what exactly we're looking for in the body. I've got a couple here for ultrasound. The first one, you guys, how long do sonograms last? Okay. My name is Debbie. I've been a tech at Wesley for 41 years. And things that we do now are the same as you've been saying all along. One test that I used to do now that takes about 15 minutes used to take me an hour. So the technology hasn't changed and improved with everything being more digitalized it's faster but the exam is variable depending on what is ordered it could be a five minute test or it could take an hour and a half 
I'm going to go ahead and there's a couple, there's at least one more here for ultrasound. I'm going to stay with you guys if that's okay. Why do you put gel on before you do the, before you scan the patient? Hi, I'm Cassidy. I've been at Wesley for about four and a half years. Um, we put gel on the patient to give us a barrier for the sound to go through. So we're able to see into the patient's body. Cassidy and Deb, do you guys want to explain to the students a little bit about how ultrasound works? Yeah, um, we get our patient um, and we use gel to get our pictures. Um, and it just depends on what the doctor is wanting. We scan a little bit about everything. We scan all the vessels in the body, all the abdominal organs and babies that everybody thinks we scan. Um, so we do a little bit of everything with ultrasound and get those pictures to show our doctors. And it doesn't use radiation, correct, Cassidy? I, I want to make sure they understand a little bit about how it. Yeah, it does not use radiation. It actually uses sound waves. Um, and the sound waves go through the gel into our patient. So it's a very safe exam. And that's what they usually do before other exams just to limit that radiation exposure. So not using any radiation at all. Perfect, thank you. All right, next question was, what happens if you cannot see what you're looking for? And I'm gonna let Jessica talk with the doctor. And I'm assuming they're saying if we can't see it on the studies, but I'll let Jess talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so as an x-ray tech, it's your job to make sure that you're getting quality images for the doctors. And that's one of my favorite parts of our job is the autonomy you have and obtaining quality images. So um, your job as an x-ray tech or any kind of imaging technologist, you will um, learn how to get the best images in school and present those to the doctor. Every patient presents their own challenges with that. Like you may learn how to take a x-ray of a foot that's a textbook patient, but when they come in and that foot's broken or they have trouble moving, um, those are all gonna be barriers that you get to use your critical thinking skills to work through. So that's um, one part of that I like, but you give those, you send those on to the physician and they will give you some feedback if it's not a quality exam. Um, they can they can ask you for repeats or ask you what your barriers were to getting those good images. But a lot of times um, it's within our scope of practice to make those right for the doctor and to make those decisions on the spot. So if the doctors can't see what they need to see or say like they said there's differences between what you can see in each modality, um, like Wynette said earlier, if you have an emergency situation where maybe a patient had a stroke, you might do a CT first, and later that doctor might need more information and they might get that better from an MRI. So a lot of this is driven from the physician and deciding if they have the information they need to, to compare it to the patient's clinical status. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Good. I knew she'd have a great answer for that. Um, well, that one we kind of. So one of the other questions was, what was the difference between CT and MRI? And we talked about that MRI uses radio waves and a magnet. Um, CT uses radiation. We discussed that a little bit earlier. I'm gonna let all my managers talk about this. Um, I'll give my answer first. What is the best part about your job? So to me, one of the best things about being um, a radiology tech is, you know, we get to make a positive impact in somebody's life. We get to take care of patients of, you know, you get patients that that live on the street. Uh, you get patients who are multi-million dollars, multi-millionaires, and you can provide the same, the same compassionate quality care to each individual patient. And any of my managers and supervisors and staff will tell you that the thing I'm most passionate about is the patient care. It's affecting somebody else's life. It's making a positive impact on someone else that that maybe hasn't had a great day, a great upbringing, a great life. They might not be in a great place, but you can maybe try and help give them that special care. So Jeff, you wanna go? What's um, your? Yeah, I, I think similar to Terry, it's all about taking care of patients. And um, my favorite part is just when you get to be part of witnessing little miracles every day when you 
when you see people survive things that they weren't expected to, or um, like Terry talked about, when you're working in interventional radiology and you get to pull that clot out of somebody's brain who had a stroke and you get to see them recover within a few days. It's, uh, we witness a lot of miracles and um, also in addition to that, we have a lot of fun. <laughs> radiology is a fun community to work in. Uh, we're fast paced. We move all around the hospital. I might get to go take care of a baby in the NICU and then I might go do a trauma on an adult or see a 90-year-old with a hip fracture. It's never boring. It's always fun, and I like the pace of it. <laughs> Why not? How about you? I think my uh, answer would change from day to day and year after year. Uh, um, sometimes it's like uh, the other ladies have talked about, um, that reward with the patient and seeing the changes and the differences you're making. And it may just be a kind word that you're saying to somebody, could be stopping and spending that extra few minutes um, and finding out that that made their day. Uh, it also, as a manager and, uh, and in that level, the satisfaction comes from being able to get that one thing that the employee needs uh to make their day better or to take care of a problem so that they can go on with their patient care and um so every day there's little things that make my day and and some days it's just that my chair spins so every day is different let's get travis's answer now travis so all of us are tech travis is our nurse manager he is he is a nurse that is trained in interventional. I know that he has scrubbed. I know he's circulated. Um, so he may just even have a little bit of a different spin on things. So, Travis? Well, Jess kind of stole my answer, so I'm going to go with food. <laughs> um, yeah, like like Jess said, uh, being able to, to hear, uh, you know, after you've uh, performed a, a thrombectomy on some patient that, you know, had a snowball's chance and it, that uh, you know, you you talk to the doctor later, and they've made a full recovery, or you know, you you've done a uh, leg angiogram on a patient who, you know, they're probably going to lose their foot, and you hear, hey, we were able to avoid an amputation, or you know, you've you've had a trauma come in, and we're able to stop the bleeding. Um, all those sort of uh, immediate rewards are are fantastic, um, but also, I mean, just just being able to to work with such a uh, a talented, uh, well-rounded team, um, you know, getting to work with both techs and nurses, uh, along with outstanding physicians who really know their stuff, and getting to learn new stuff every day is just it's fantastic. Thanks, Travis. We'll go and get Lori and Cassidy and Deb's answer, and then I have another question for Travis. Lori, Cassidy, Deb, what about you? What you guys? What's the best part of your job? Hello. I guess for me, it's working with such a wonderful, amazing, hardworking, and talented team that takes exceptional care of the patients. It's about making a difference in somebody's life every day. Um, I think that's my um, internal drive. Um, and I guess the ever changing technologies gets better and better and you're learning constantly. It's never a dull moment. It's always constant learning. I'd like to say that with ultrasound, we take care of the patients, but we do a lot of radi interaction with the radiologists. So after we do an exam in our department, we go and visit with the radiologist and talk to him about the patient's images, but also about the patient's history. So they, after spending 20, 30 minutes with them, we can add to the history that gives the doctor a little more insight on what might be going on. So it's just the back and forth and it's, and you learn so much by just getting to speak with the radiologist after each test. Um, my favorite part is we do get to tell if they're having a boy or a girl on mm -hmm. ultrasound. <laughs> so you get to, you know, excite all those families that their baby's a boy or a baby's a girl and Get, a, get excited with them in that moment and also giving good news to patients if they're scared or worried about anything that they're getting tested on that 
it is a good, you know, it is good. Nothing scary is going on and getting able to do all those different exams. I don't hear anybody talking, but I don't know. Yeah, they're supposed to be. I no, mean, I don't see we, were, we were hearing them. Well, I, I was hoping that somebody would say something so I can see. I think they are talking. Can you guys hear us okay? Yeah, so it's picking up our mic. Okay. Okay, perfect. I, I wanted to ask Travis a question. I, I'd like Travis to kind of give his um, input as to how we incorporate nurses. So typically nursing is a bedside. Do what? You can't hear us? Yeah, there's something wrong with your computer because that's why I'm running the test here. It's not making any sound. Can you hear me now? There we go. Is that better? Yeah, we're uh, playing around with things. There's problems on this side. Okay, I mean, so you guys can hear me okay. Melody? Okay, never mind. You got it. Yes, my whole system went down. So sorry. Oh, okay. You're All fine. Right. Can you hear you can hear us now then? Yes. Uh, where is it? There okay. Is it. Perfect. All right, hopefully this got okay. fixed. I would just like Travis to kind of explain the role the nurses play and and the opportunities interventional nurse procedural nursing has. Sure. So uh, nurses play a, a wide var variety of roles uh, within uh, radiology, especially interventional radiology. Um, we have our our holding room. Uh, where we have uh, nurses who uh, do all the, the prep work, you know, get uh, uh, lab values drawn, start IVs, baseline vital signs, you know, uh, and overall provide a, a uh, calming experience for the for the patient, you know, who's getting, re getting ready for a procedure. Uh, then we've also got uh, nurses in CT that help out with a wide variety of procedures back there, uh, drains, biopsies, uh, all kinds of stuff. And then uh, we've also got a nurse for each uh, IR procedure. Um, they're responsible for monitoring vital signs uh, and administering uh, sedation or any other medications that are that are needed for the procedure. Uh, and just uh, overall um, helping out in, in any capacity. Um, I myself, I've, like Terry said, I've been trained to scrub in on procedures, circulate, uh, whatever. Um, We've also got nurses who help out in MRI with monitoring patients. Um, yeah, so all kinds of stuff that nurses can do in radiology. Perfect. Thanks, Travis. Um, one of the last, I've got two more questions. We're going to do one more question, and then we've got a video that kind of goes through all the different modalities. Um, anyway, so. One somebody did ask, what's the hardest part um, of our job? And I think the hardest part for me is taking care when you have the kids coming in that have been abused, the child abuse, the elder abuse. Um, I don't think that ever gets any easier. And we have some outstanding techs. We have um, a tech here in the department that's been with us for 33 years. Um, and her name is Linda. And all, she does almost all of our, all of our PEDs. And I tell her every day, I don't think I could do her job. Um, I, I, I'd go home and cry every night, so. Yeah, I think I would, I would agree with Terry. It's uh, when you see bad things happen to good people, that's, that's hard to cope with, and it sometimes hits close to home. But um, at the end of the day, you just remind yourself that you helped everybody you could, and, and the rewards of this job outweigh the bad parts. Wynette, you got anything? I don't. You have all have said it, um, just uh, some of the sadness within the job, but um, I think uh, the rewards always outweigh that. And that's part of the rewards because you you were there and um, hopefully you've done everything you can to, to make that better for the patient and the family that's going through. Travis or Lori, do you guys have anything to add? 
I'd say for, for my department, probably the, the hardest part is call. Um, unfortunately, medical emergencies don't limit themselves to Monday through Friday, banker's hours. Um, and so, uh, yeah, being uh, uh, being expected to, to come in overnight, weekends, holidays, uh, probably the, the hardest part for my folks. I'll let Deb take that one. <laughs> Well, ours is hard some too because especially when we do with the women's imaging and they're having a miscarriage and they've been pregnant many times and then there's no heartbeat on that baby or something. Those are those are sad things and we feel it with the patients. I mean, it breaks our hearts too. So, and we find cancer and we don't actually diagnose and share that with the patient, but it still affects you. So there's hard things. But then you get rewarded when you find something that can save a patient's life too. So there's the pluses with it as well. Perfect. Thank you guys. All right. I think we've got a video that's going to show you. It's going to go through most of the modalities that we've got here. Just some pictures of the equipment. See if I can, so that's, that's your basic fluoroscopy room. Um, it's a diagnostic, they do X, plain x-ray, that's the, the control panel and the monitors. Um, oh, and this is actually, I think the room that we, nope, that might be the fluoro room. There's a tower that goes above the patient that slides in and out. You take real time pictures so you can watch somebody drinking something. I mean, there's a lot of studies we do in there. So um, these are, this is a picture of our hallway of the MRI department, um, the changing areas. We've been very fortunate to have some great remodels. This is a picture from the door of an MRI unit. If you don't know, you cannot go into an MRI unit with anything metal because it will be sucked into that machine right there. That's the magnet, that's the itself, that's what every, the metal would be sucked into, but the patient goes in that. This is the room that we're in. This is your basic x-ray room. Um, do some long bones, some scoliosis studies, chest x-rays, all extremities, skeletal surveys. That's the tube itself. That's an interventional suite. So those are, that's the biplane. Um, that's where they're gonna be doing the angiograms and the thrombectomies and typoplasties, which is in the back. That's the control area. They're moving, they're moving their stuff. <laughs> oh, that's the ultrasound room. They've got an ultrasound unit next to the cart there. And the other piece is a piece that they use when they're doing, um, when they're removing fluid from somebody's like their lungs or their abdominal cavity. That's the monitor on the ultrasound. That's actually what the images would come up on. That's where they would put all the demographics and stuff into. They have some special chairs, as you can see behind them, to sit in. That's the mammography unit, so that's where the patients do the mammogram, or the techs do the mammograms. Um, huge part of women's imaging. That is a spec CT nuclear medicine test. So that doesn't emit radiation. We actually inject radioisotopes into the patient, and that that piece of the equipment acquires the image. And if you can see the donut shaped in the back, that's the CT portion. This is our newest CT. This is a 512 slice CT machine. Um, it, we purchased it to do the cardiac work for the cardiologist. It also, it'll do everything. I'm sure our trauma docs are gonna love it when they figure out we've got it here, so. And then that is one of our other CT machines. A um, little bit of the difference, as you can tell, how the gantry was had more of a curvature to it. The 512 slice CT spins so fast with so much force that they had to make it 
square so that it, yeah. And that's the control panel of the CT machine. They've got two panels there that they can work from. That's it. Okay, there we go. Okay, Scott. Scott. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so half of that, my kids just saw a black screen and then it came on. So I don't know if there's any way that you can maybe send me that short video, email it to me so that my kids can see it. Um, we saw about 20 seconds of that. Oh. Yeah, that, that's fine. Yeah, I can get that to you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll get that to you. I am so sorry. My my, I'm not sure what's happening to my Surface Pro this morning, but it's got some real problems. But I am appreciating so much everything that we're hearing from you guys. Okay. Hey, we'll we'll go ahead and show you guys this room. Jessica can show you how some of the equipment works and moves and. Oh. Yeah, she can. She'll line up. Um, the machine, now we can go ahead. The machines automatically move. You push a button and it will automatically line up. She's gonna show you how that works right now. So this piece is gonna move and line up with this. Here, go ahead. <laughs> yes. Oh. Tell her what you're doing with that. Okay. This is the detector. This is what actually will acquire the images. And so it carefully, very carefully, because these are super expensive, you're going to slide that in, and she's going to push a button and see how the bucky is moving, and then the tube's going to move. And you always want 40 inches from your detector to the tube head. And so that automatically sets it. So if we want to raise the table to make it a little more ergonomical, we're going to raise the table. And as we raise the table, the tube's going to come up. But so we can raise the table so we're not bent over, hunched, trying to position a patient. And then we can slide the table. The table slides super easy. So you can move the patient right, left, up, down, depending on what body part you're looking for. Again, you can lower it. If you need to lower it, the tube's going to come down with that. And then there's a piece behind me. Jessica can kind of show you. You want to show them how that slides over there? Do you know? No. Oh. <laughs> this piece just slides over. This is what they do um, long bone, scoliosis series. They can do, but it's pretty slick. So it goes right over the grooves in the ground. And then it pops down. Oh, I'm not going to get it in there. And then the other one does the same thing. You have the patient stand up on there. And so they use the tube and they do special angles. And the picture pastes the entire spine together. So they get an entire picture from here to here. So when you hear kids that have scoliosis, this is how they diagnose them. So. And it's it's pretty impressive. The doctors love it, so and it's easy to move. It's not tough. Okay. Um, Melody, do your students have any questions? Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. I was just asking my kids. I think. Um, Everything you've that you have talked about has been great. The only thing I and maybe you covered this and I and we were not able to hear you. Did you talk about any radiology tech programs around this area that maybe you guys participated in or that um, that you know about that my kids might be interested in in learning about? Yes, that's I, that we were saving that. That's the best for the last. So um, locally, we have Kansas Newman University. Newman University has a two-year associates program. Um, Hutch, Hutchinson, Hutch, Hutch, uh, Hutch College, um, they have a two-year program. 
we actually currently we partner with Newman and we take their students. We're also trying to work on some partnerships, maybe with the Hutchinson program. There are also uh, Hayes University, Fort Hayes State University. They have a two year associate. They actually have the only four year um, that I am aware of in the state of Kansas. They have a four year degree in radiological sciences. Um, Washburn has an associate's program. Labette up in Parsons has an associate program. I believe, I, I'm sure KU Medicine has, um, they have it all, so yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the requirements. So because of the popularity of the radiological technology program, um, you, go, you go to Hutch and so say you go to Hutch or Newman, you would actually have to acquire your prerequisites. Now, a lot of those you can take in, in high school, your English, Comp 1, Comp 2, Algebra. I don't know all the specific requirements, so you're going to get your basics. Then you're going to apply to get into the program. It, it's highly competitive. Um, GPA probably needs to be above a 3.75 in your college classes. Um, and you're going to interview. So I would highly recommend working on your interview skills if the high schools do that or if you could reach out to somebody that can help you. I know that even through like Newman and Hutch, they have some paths you can do when you're getting your prerequisites that you can go in and work with people on your interview skills. Um, interviewing is an art and it's definitely something way different than when I was, when I was going to school. I don't even want to know what my interview would have been like. Um, but we have lots of great programs. And then once you have gotten accepted into the program, it's a two year program and it's a two year commitment. It's not one where you get summers off. Um, you do some clinical stuff during the summers. Every program is set up a little bit different. Um, some of them do all of their didactic, which is your schoolwork, the first year, and then clinicals the second year. Newman does, a little, does both of them at the same time. You get some clinical the first year and then more clinical the second year. Um, hey, I can't speak to it. Look I'm right back. Um, WSU Tech does not have a radiology program, do they? Not yet, they don't. Okay, I was just checking on that. No, they don't. Um, be great if they did, but they, they don't currently. Okay. Um, one of the things I do want to suggest, though, if you, ha if you even think that you remotely want to go on, um, advance your career into management, leadership of any type, um, or, or sales, like equipment sales, I would, I would recommend getting your bachelor's. It doesn't have to be the bachelor's through Hayes, although Hayes has an awesome program. I got my bachelor's through Newman. My bachelor's is in business management. I finished my MBA this summer, and it's, I have an MBA um, with emphasis in leadership and healthcare leadership. So there's, there's a lot of different op options you can go. You can always go in. And then the other modalities you can go into, ultrasound, MRI, um, nuclear medicine, all of them requires a little bit of additional training. Mammography, they all have separate registries. CT. So, anything, Jess? Mm -hmm. oh, I, was, I was a Newman grad for my um, initial associate's degree for radiology. And then I, eight years later, decided to go back and get my bachelor's from Fort Hayes. So, um, I, I would say Terry's got a good recommendation to do it all at once. It's a lot easier, but it is always an option to go back and further your education in this field also. Um, I would just say when you look at schools, make sure that they are accredited. Yeah. Okay, so one more question. Basically, when you get that two year associates from Newman, are you learning ultrasound and CT and um, MRI? Are you learning all of the specific modalities in that two year or are you just what basically then do you have to go on and specialize or what's covered in that two year program? The two year you will graduate with your associates in radiologic sciences, which is the diagnostic, the fluoroscopy, the OR, the ER component, all of those other areas that you mentioned, those would be some additional training. You get the opportunity to shadow. You spend some time in those departments working with the staff um, and that, that way you learn if that's a career path you want to take or you don't want to take. And I think here at Wesley, we do an outstanding job 
of cross training. If we have a if we have a, a staff tech that's a high performer and they say, you know, I really want to learn CT, we're going to take it upon ourselves to help cross train them, and we're going to give them so much time to get that registry. If that's the direction they want to go, and they want to go into that position, um, like Jess said, she started in diagnostics, she cross trained into interventional lab. Um, ultrasound's not. Uh, we, we don't typically do that with ultrasound. We have recently done it with MRI. We've done it with CT. We've done it with interventional. Um, so does that answer your question? Yes, thank you so much. Are there any other questions? Anybody want to add anything else? Lynette, Travis, Lori? I'm good. It's just a, a great field to get into healthcare. And this is one of the, uh, I know when I was wanting to get into healthcare, sorry, Travis, um, I didn't want to be a nurse. And that's all I really knew about healthcare. So um, there's so many other options to go into. So, um, and so many different rewarding fields, uh, including nursing. <laughs> Thanks for the plug, Wynette. <laughs> All right. Well, just kind of to wrap things up, we are very pleased that you guys were able to join us. And I want to give a shout out to my friend Deb, who's in the ultrasound department. She and I worked together in the OB world, and I got to know her probably those 38 years ago, or whatever her number was, 41. Um, then, and she helped me with the biopsy I had. She was the one I called and said, would you hold my hand? And she did. So, you know, to Deb, I love her to pieces. And Travis, your team was very instrumental in a, a family who had uh, a real serious incident that you guys worked real hard. So I want to give a shout out to you guys as well. So thank you for that. Um, so this end of the year is winding down. We're going to probably pick this up next fall. We'll have some dates and times that we will do some other question and answers, just like we've done with Terry and her team today. So give us some thought over the summer what you might want to do. But we have one other opportunity that we want to kind of remind folks about. We have just a few spots left in our Wesley Career Launch program that we're going to do. We have a session in early June and one in late June. That's the two days come to Wesley, get a taste of healthcare. Um, if you did not apply and are interested, I need to have you do that today. We need to get that wrapped up. We just, like I said, have just a few spots left, and we want to encourage anybody who was on the border tottering back and forth, if you want to do it, we want to take you on as well. So, um, anything else, Scott? Okay, Scott's giving me the thumbs up. If you guys need um, anything, just let us know. We are excited to have been able to do this with you this uh, Christmas break and through the spring, and we look forward to what we can do with you guys in the fall. So everybody have a safe and wonderful summer. Bye. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye, Melody. Bye.